Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In today's video lecture, I shall be discussing on network layer services. The different services provided by the network layer, packetizing, routing and forwarding, error control, flow control, congestion control, quality of service and security. Now the very first uh, service that is listed here is packetizing. But before I start uh, discussing on that, let me just tell you the very simple network scenario that is what exactly the network layer is responsible for. It is mainly responsible to send the packet from the source to the destination and the packet if it is too large in size the packet gets fragmented. So this is also one of the task of the network layer. Now this is roughly we say okay the packet has to get transmitted from the net uh, this one from the sender to the receiver but what are the other services that that is in detail because the network consists of what the routers and all in between the sender and the receiver so definitely which are the devices that are there in the network and which, which are the services that are the services that are provided by the network does it influences or these devices that are connected in the network influences the services of the network layer now just to take a very simple network scenario let us take there is one network here a and another network here b so this is one lan another lan connected via routers so let us give the names for the systems or nodes that are connected a1 a2 here b1 b2 and b3 now whenever a packet suppose let us uh, say that a2 wants to send the packet to b1 a2 wants to send the packet to b1 now the very first service that is provided is packetizing now at the node a2 at the node a2 so network layer is the the third layer in the osi model it takes the data from the transport layer at the sender and it sends the data to the data link layer so hope you people can recall the five layers fine application layer transport layer network layer data link layer and physical layer so this particular that this host a2 which wants to send the data to b1 the the network layer at a2 will take the data from where will take the data from the transport layer and it sends the data to the data link layer now when sending the packet when sending the data from this it has to we say the function is packetizing it is actually what exactly what do you mean by packetizing it encapsulates the payload it adds the source address and the destination address and it sends to the data link layer so that the data link layer at the receiver side find the, the data link layer at the receiver side will decapsulate the payload and it will send the data to the network layer so this way we say the encapsulation of the data at the source and the decapsulation at the destination is called as packetizing the next function uh, provided by the network layer is routing and forwarding now routing and forwarding to explain these two concepts okay i'll just take one example here or i can make use of the same network scenario routing is the route taken by the packet from the sender to the receiver now here in this example i am just showing you one route so a2 the packet travels here r1 r2 and it reaches the the, the destination network so this is the route that is adopted by the packet now there can be multiple routes also to reach the destination for example you i'll show you here there is one more network coming in between these two networks or i can say that there are two more networks that are falling in between these two networks so the packet can start from the source okay the packet can travel like this and reaches the destination host or it can take this route so whichever route the packet is adopting in order to make uh, in order in order to reach the destination host becomes the routing forwarding is at the router 
Now the packet reaches the router. So let us take this example router which has got what interfaces. You give the numbering to the interfaces 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, there are 4 interfaces. The packet has come on interface 1. So now the router has to decide that to make this packet reach the destination host, whether it has to place the packet on interface 4 or interface 3 or interface 2. So this at this junction it, it has to decide which particular interface it has to place the packet. So that becomes the forwarding. Like each router will maintain a forwarding table. I will show you the uh, columns that are there in the forwarding table. So it will write like this if the destination is some particular node what should be the interface used. So this is the forwarding table which is maintained by which one which is maintained by this router. Let us take router R1 is maintaining this forwarding table. It has got two columns. Now in this example the router wants to send the packet to the destination B1. Now let us take there is one more okay a network C1 uh, C network which has got nodes C1 C2 and there is another D, D network which has got D1 D2 D3. So in this particular case the router has to decide if the destination node or the destination host is V1 to which interface it has to place that will be written here. Suppose if it is interface 3 in this example in this 2 1 or like this I will just write down okay assuming that these are the interface. So once the router receives the packet it will refer its forwarding table it will check that yes if the destination host is B1 it has to place the packet on the interface 3. If the destination host is C2 it has to place it on interface 2. If the destination host is D3 it has to place it on interface 4. So an analogy for this I will tell you suppose if a person is traveling from uh, Delhi to Chennai let us assume there are several routes okay which will take the person from Delhi to Chennai one route is selected now that becomes what routing forwarding is now between Delhi and Chennai okay when with whatever transportation uh, this one it, that person is traveling when it starts traveling in between it comes across what different junctions or we say in our uh, different circles so there it is very clearly mentioned that to move to the Chennai you take a left to move to the other city you take a right so this way the directions will be mentioned at that particular circle so here that uh, person has to decide whether it has when it reaches a particular circle whether it has to go straight or take a left or take a right turn in order to reach that destination place similar that particular analogy I can relate this with the forwarding concept of the routing. The third service in the list which is given as the error control. So error control is not strictly implemented in the network layer. See mainly error control if you look at the packet there will be the data part in the packet and the header part. So at network layer definitely error correction is done only for the header part. We say using the checksum it checks for the correctness of the values that are placed in the header part. So not to that completely uh, this one uh, not to the complete extent the error control mechanism is involved in the network layer. Moreover the packets get fragmented also at the routers fine. So the error control becomes inefficient that is the reason it is not completely incorporated at the network layer the error control whereas the flow control and congestion control even these two first you try to understand what do you mean by flow control and congestion control. Now take one simple network scenario the source host and the destination host fine. The packets start from the source it tries to move towards the destination. The rate at which the packets are coming out from the source and the rate at which the destination is receiving the packets should be same here or it should match. Otherwise what will happen is 
the destination host that is the receiver is unable to accept the packets at the rate at which the source is sending the packets. So the flow it has to regulate the flow from the source to the destination. Otherwise it is difficult for the destination to accommodate all those packets it has got its uh, this one limited capacity if it is accepting more number of if it is trying if more number of packets arrive definitely it will drop the packets fine so that is the reason it, it has to this particular care has to be taken that the flow at which the packets travel from the source okay should match with the flow at which the receiver is accepting the packets for processing for this also i'll give you one analogy analogy suppose if there is one uh, particular place let us take place one and people are traveling to a, a particular place place two now this place two is a very popular place people are uh, coming out from this place okay and they are reaching this place two but place two has got a limited capacity to accommodate the number of uh, members that are reaching this place two so it cannot accept more number of people okay reaching this place too if it is trying to accept more number of then what will happen uh, if it cannot accept that's why it will send a message to place one to stop sending the people and it is already full here the place two is already full in case yes there are people that are coming out from place two after visiting this place two they are leaving the place and there is a space then once again the next set of batch of people can reach the place two so it has to regulate it has to maintain that flow so that is how here also you can assume the packets that are coming from the source okay should match with the rate at which the packets that are getting processed at the destination that was about the flow control so even the flow control is not completely implemented in the network layer the next is the congestion control now as the receiver host is unable to accept the packets because it is not able to process similarly the network may also not be able to accept if more number of packets are leaving the source when we say network it is actually the routers so each router is having its own buffer capacity to hold the packets so if more number of packets arrives here okay then we say there is a congestion happening in the network so this, this that is why the there should be some mechanism to control the congestion this is the concept of the congestion control in the network layer then we have the quality of service quality of service is definitely see earlier when the there were when the internet started it was only the data that was getting transmitted from one end to another end fine now we expect a very high quality by the network layer because it's not the data we have a uh, real time uh, data packets coming we have the audio and the video included in the packet hence we expect a very high quality so this is also one of the services provided by the network layer similar is with the security earlier when the internet was introduced it was only the data simpler data that was getting trans that was getting uh, transmitted from the source to this uh, destination but now we expect a very high secured feature in the network networking because it is not the data we are dealing with all business transactions using the internet nowadays every one of us try to use the digital mode of transferring money okay to the people that's the reason the security plays a very important role in the network layer and ipsec layer is introduced as an intermediate layer in between the network layer to support the security aspect of the network layer so just to summarize these are the different uh, services provided by the network layer error control flow control congestion control not to the maximum extent it is included or implemented in the network layer whereas you will be learning in future lectures the detail topic the details in routing and forwarding so mainly this computer network subject if you see the, there are several routing algorithms that you will be lear learning under the routing and there itself in the routing algorithm the forwarding concept will also come into picture both are inseparable routing and forwarding so you can just uh, look at this exam scenarios you can give your own scenarios also not like that that whatever examples i am giving here 
just try to give a simple scenario and give the explanation for the network layer or the services provided by the network layer. Hope you people have followed this topic. Thank you. Take care.